Hello, and welcome to Linux Action News, episode 290, recorded on April 26th, 2023. I'm Chris. And I'm Wes. Hello, Wes. Let's do the news. On Monday, Red Hat CEO Matt Hicks informed the staff of the company's plans to lay off around 800 people. In the note to the staff, or associates, as Red Hat calls them, the CEO touched on the odd dichotomy that the company is making with this move, letting people go while profits are up. Writing, quote, I know it is hard to reconcile that we are a successful, growing company and still need to take these hard actions. At the core of this decision is the need to rebalance where we are investing to enable Red Hat's future. The market opportunities will not wait for us. Hicks went on to clarify who would not be losing their job that day. Quote, we will not reduce roles directly selling to customers or building our products. The math works out to just under 4% of Red Hat's 20,000-person workforce. Those that did get laid off will receive some severance. Quote, The specifics for associates will differ based on the country they are located and be consistent with local practices. For example, associates in the U.S. will be eligible to receive a variety of benefits, including above-market severance pay, continued medical coverage for between three and six months based on years of service, Q1 bonuses paid at 100% of the funded target, and Q2 bonuses paid at 100% of their prorated quarterly target six months of career transition services, and extended access to the Employee Assistance Program. Outside the U.S., benefits will align with local laws and practices in each country. This one hits different. It's, it's hard to see this from our leading Linux company champ out there. But the reality is job cuts are becoming more and more common in the tech industry right now. This is an issue we've been tracking on Coda Radio. And according to data compiled by layoffs.fyi, That's an online tracker that keeps tabs on job losses in the tech sector. 597 tech companies have laid off 171,660 staff so far this year, compared to just 164, 411,000 layoffs for all of last year. It is hard to see and a bit difficult to understand from the outside when profits are up. But you do have to give Red Hat credit, I think, for trying to do their best with the severance packages. That's nice to see. And I just have to hope that this proactive action now keeps the company healthy and the remaining jobs secure. Calling it a calm release, Linus Torvalds announced Linux 6.3 this week. In the announcement, Linus noted, quote, that doesn't mean that something nasty couldn't have been lurking all these weeks, of course. But let's just take things at face value and hope it all means that everything is fine. And it really was a nice, controlled release cycle. It happens. AMD users will really benefit from 6.3. The various AMD platforms received fixes, power optimizations, and new drivers. But Intel users don't need to feel left out. There's a new DRM accelerated driver for the Intel Versatile Processing Unit that's integrated into the 14th generation Intel Meteor Lake CPUs. Getting that stuff in nice and early. RISC V users also receive some nice updates, mostly for the enterprise platforms, though. There's so many hardware updates and enablements. Let's put those aside for a moment because there's an interesting story in here. I noticed two last minute fixes landed. One of them seems like a pretty important fix for many users of an Intel Gigabit Ethernet adapter. We'll have the specifics in the links. But this adapter had been stuck at 60% of its maximum speed for the past three years. And that other last-minute fix? Well, it was actually two patches submitted for the ButterFS file system driver to solve an urgent regression that landed in Linux 6.2. The issue was with the file system's async discard that received some attention recently. This was enabled by default since Linux 6.2, but it came with a low IOPS limit, which meant processing a large batch of discards would take a long time and waste power and disk activity. Yeah, and the fix was relatively simple. You just had to adjust some timeouts, variables that could be changed, just numbers. And so the complexity was low, and I think that made it 
a little bit more tasteful to accept this last minute patch so close to the end of the 6.3 cycle. But as a result, that's been taken care of. Not very many users ended up with Linux 6.2 and 6.3 looks like a fantastic release. The redesigned version of the FlatHub website has been launched. The fresh design of FlatHub.org brings several improvements, including verified app support, download statistics, a dark mode, and the handy ability to hit the slash key and bring focus to the search box so you can start typing right away. It looks great, and we suggest you check out FlatHub.org if you haven't seen the new look yet. Linode.com slash LAN. Go there to get $100 in 60-day credit on a new account, and it's a great way to support the show while you are checking out fast, reliable cloud hosting. That's Linode.com slash L-A-N. Linode is 30 to 50% cheaper than the hyperscalers that want to lock into their ridiculous, weird platforms. They have great features like S3-compatible object storage, cloud firewalls that prevent traffic from getting to your rig, and backups that are easy to create, understand, and restore. And the platform has documentation like you wouldn't believe. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes to a guide that focuses on securing Docker, giving you some fundamentals to getting Docker running and hardened. And it's a free ebook, no like email required, no like signing up at Linode required. It's something they had commissioned and they're making available to the community. I'll put a link in the notes for you because I think it's a great resource when you're setting up Docker on the public internet. They got more than 11 data centers to choose from, another dozen coming on this year. They are their own ISP and the performance is incredible. So go try it for yourself, support the show. Linode.com slash LAN. We use it, you'll love it. Linode.com slash L-A-N. And thanks to Collide. Collide.com slash LAN. Collide can help Okta users achieve 100% fleet compliance. If a device isn't compliant, the user can log into your cloud applications until they've fixed the problem. The moment Collide's agent detects a problem, it alerts the user and gives them instructions to fix it. If they don't fix the problem within a set time, they're blocked. It's that simple. Collide's solution ensures device compliance as part of authentication, which reduces support tickets and IT frustration while ensuring 100% compliance. Learn more or book a demo at collide.com slash LAN. Canonical announced Ubuntu 23.04 this week. They draw attention to their continued focus on improving quality and performance in this release. And of course, this release features the new Flutter-based installer that we've been telling you about. The main desktop flavor ships with GNOME 44, with that improved quick settings menu, thumbnail views finally in the GTK file picker, and improved snap update handling by downloading updates in the background. There's always so much going on with all the flavors. The community favorite Kubuntu comes in with Plasma 527, KDE Frameworks 5.104, and KDE Gear 22.12. Pulse Audio and Xorg remain the defaults for this release, but Pipewire is planned to become the default sound server in 23.10. Along with the release announcement, Canonical made a separate announcement touting the Azure Active Directory support that's baked into 23.04, saying, quote, Ubuntu Desktop 2304 is the first and only Linux distribution to enable native user authentication with Azure Active Directory. Yeah, there's Active Directory support, and then there's Azure Active Directory support. If your distro doesn't Azure, does it even Active Directory? Canonical's pretty hyped about this. They made a separate post just to call out this singular feature. That's not a really common thing, so we'll put a link to that in the notes as well. And, you know, it's kind of a fantastic feature for Ubuntu users living in a Windows enterprise. So with this cloud authentication support, as they call it, users on the Microsoft 365 enterprise plans, well, now they can log into their Ubuntu desktop with the same credentials they use to log into Office or Azure. Canonical notes that support for this was made possible thanks to a project they've been working on that leverages an existing Microsoft Go library. Quote, this is made possible thanks to the AAD auth package currently in public preview. This feature is available to try in Ubuntu 2304 and will be later ported to LTS versions of Ubuntu. And while we're covering Microsoft-related Ubuntu features, Systemd has become the default 
on WSL for Ubuntu. There aren't many reasons this is better, but one clear benefit is the experience for developers will be as close to possible to native when inside WSL. And it's more than just 2304 getting this change. Ubuntu 2204 LTS and the default Ubuntu application available on the Microsoft Store are moving as well. Earlier LTS releases will follow suit in the next few weeks. I'd kind of forgotten that was a thing. And this definitely will bring WSL Ubuntu in line with regular Ubuntu. Last but not least, though, this release cycle saw two new official flavors come on board, Ubuntu Cinnamon and Ubuntu Edge Ubuntu. That is nice to see. And listeners might recall, we shared a bit of the journey Ubuntu Cinnamon went through to get to this point in Linux Action News 286. And with all that, the code name for the next Ubuntu release, 2310, is now known. And it will simply be Mantic. <laughs> okay, then. Well, you know, if, it feels like 2304 just got out the door and we're already looking at the next release, but you know we'll be watching that and everything else going on in the world of Linux and open source software. So you're not going to want to miss a single episode. Head on over to linuxactionnews.com slash subscribe for all the ways to get new episodes. And linuxactionnews.com slash contact for ways to get in touch. And it's last minute. But if you're in the Pacific Northwest, We'll be in Olympia, Washington this Saturday at 1 p.m. with our local Linux Olympia meetup. Details at meetup.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. And we'll be back next week with our take on the latest Linux and open source news. Thanks for joining us. That's all the news for this week. <laughs>